went back to the, it's finished today and I looked at it for a little while. I went back to the tomb and I wanted to bring the message on the tomb tonight and right back where we was at before. I ain't had to study, I ain't got to study this message a while ago before we started leaving the house and Andrew said something other than you ought to leave a message on the heart. Yeah. I had the well, opportunity to even study it. Pretty right. enough, I like to, you ain't noticed, I like to get all my points by the first letters and, and all that. I mean, I, I really believe in that. Not not because to make me look smart and I like, so maybe you can remember the message when you leave. I mean, Brother Dexter Cruzdale, he, he taught me how to preach, you know, the Lord taught me how to that. I sat under him and listened to him, and he always made a message very simple. Or a week later, you could have, his, you could remember his outline. I know he came and he preached, we went and heard him three nights over Back David a few weeks ago, and I can still tell you his outlines. And on every night that he preached, because it's so simple. I believe we're to have that. Tonight's going to be a little bit different. I ain't had time to get my outline, and I don't even have an outline, but just a thought. Like Patrick was just praying this evening. It's two weeks of church. We've been in church at Brownsdale, and here for two weeks. Some of y'all came down to Brownsdale and visited with us. I believe Kurt and Bell was there every night. So that means they like me. They they've been two weeks except well, last Saturday night. Okay. We missed going to church. You going anywhere last Saturday night, Brother Kirk? No. Uh, we stayed home and rested. We'd have went last Saturday night somewhere. Somebody would call and invite us. We'd have went. They wouldn't. Yeah. And then we'd have made a full two weeks of it. You know, I believe this: the ones that sat under the preaching, the ones that specialists come back tonight after y'all had a long day here, you you receive something from God. I really believe that. And and and, and I want to tell you this. Patrick, that everybody that comes to the revival don't get revived. Right. But I can tell you this, you got enough of people that's here tonight that if they got revived, if they got a spark, and if they got a desire to do what God would have them to do, you got enough for this church to be turned upside down. Yeah. I mean, it don't take just a few to get excited for the Lord, to do a great work for the Lord. God, you know, he, he took those 12 disciples and one of them was the devil himself. And look what happened with them. The upper room, Jesus, I mean, God, Peter and all of them, whenever the Lord come, uh, come back in the form of the Holy Spirit, as we talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit last night, one man stood in the pulpit and preached, and you see how many people got saved. Then you think about the Apostle Paul, a murderer. I'm talking about of anybody that you would never believe God could use. God used the Apostle Paul, I believe, more than any man that's ever walked on the face of earth other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, I, he, he just he just did miracles. I mean, it didn't talk about the shadow going over people and being healed. I mean, just that kind of power of God. Could you imagine us having that kind of power of God? Lord. And I want to tell you this. I believe we can. Amen. I really believe that we can. we got to grow in His grace and knowledge. You know, Apostle Paul took time out. He just studied the Word. He, just, he, he took time out and he studied the Word for many years. And I'm going to tell you, he had the opportunity after he began to minister to study the Word a lot because he stayed in jail a lot. He didn't have a whole lot to do but to study the Word of God. You know, I, I you, you say, was it God's will for him to be in jail? I reckon so. Because God got him out every time he wanted him out, didn't he? He was wherever God wanted him to be. You know, Apostle Paul could have been so busy that God had to put him in jail and get along with him sometimes to study and go to school. Remember this, man. I learned this years ago. You'll never learn nothing on the mountaintop. You'll never learn anything. When you're on the mountaintop for God and everything's going great and everything's going good, you're not learning nothing. That's when you're in the valleys you learn for God. I mean, you know, the lilies is where? In the valleys. Man, ain't nothing but a shout on the mountaintop. You get up there and shout and hear, the, hear it echo through the canyons. And that's a good time with God. Nothing wrong with the mountaintop. I love it. But I ain't never learned nothing on the mountaintop. Everything I ever learned was in the valleys. Right. That's where I was always taught what God would have me to know. And I, 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 this is going to be completely different than what you would expect before Easter Sunday morning. I'm just going to do what God laid on my heart. That's all I know to do. And I, 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 want, to, I want to bring a message to you in hope. I want to bring a message to you that, 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 that maybe as you're walking with God, you can see one of these signs coming into your life. And if you can stop and you can pray and you can get back in the Word and you get back on your face before God, get back to work for God. Did you know that when you're idle is the most dangerous time in your life? I mean, you take a kid and you give a kid nothing to do, you watch that kid's getting in trouble. If you keep that kid busy, 
that kid will never get in trouble. That's why that I believe our kids, I, I, I encourage sports with my, my kids. I, I encourage them being involved as much as they can in sports and church and everything so that they don't have idle time so they, can, they, don't, they don't get out in the world and start doing the things the world does. And we as Christians, you know, we ought to be the same way. We ought to be about the master's business. We ought to be doing what God has called us to do. And, and I believe on a, on a Friday night crowd after two weeks nearby to the revival, and after a big day like y'all had today, the ones that come back, they really want to be about the master's business. They really want to see souls saved. They really want to be the witness we talked about last time that needs to be. They really want to see stuff happen for God to bring honor and glory unto Him. And you know, the only way we can do that is keep that fire of revival like we talked about Monday night inside of our life burning. We need to keep that fire burning and, and, and so that, that, that we can keep going. See, when we stop going and when we start stop serving God, when we stop letting God work through us, my friends, we begin to slip back. We begin to go back and we begin to do the things that we used to do even before we got saved. That's right. I mean, it, you sitting there, the Bible says a man thinks he stands, take heed lest he falls. In other words, when you think you've arrived at that point that you at where you need to be, you better look out. You fix the fall. You fix the fall. We all need Christ. We all need more of, of the walk with Him and a closer walk with Him and more fellowship with Him and, 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 and more learning about His Word and, and all that we, every day of our life, it don't matter how long you've been saved, it don't matter how much you know about the Word of God, you need more. And when you come to the place that you don't need more, that you, you think you've got there, you think that, you, that, that, that you've arrived at that spot in the Word that you're just... You're just right there like God wants you to. You'll fall. Now I'm going to read one passage of Scripture and I'm not going to be preaching that, but just to give you a little thought. Over 1 Corinthians chapter 5, here, it, 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 there's a story that I don't even like to read, I don't even like to refer to, because a lot of people look at it and it's scary. But I, I want you to look at this and then we're going to go to the message after this. We're not even going to be preaching from this, just, just a little thought. It says in verse 1, it's... A, it's, a, it's it is reported commonly that there, that there is fornication among you, such fornication that's not named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Mm. Now listen to this. It says here is a man that's in the church, and he has the desire, I believe it is for his stepmother. Mm. It didn't say for his mother, it said for his father's wife. And here, not only did he have a desire, it said that he went until he was doing an unnatural sex act with his stepmother. Now, if just anything, if it was adultery, if it was fortification, anything would be unnatural, wouldn't you say, in, in that situation? I mean, could you imagine what it was like? For this man, undoubtedly, he had held some kind of office in the church. He was just not someone that come Sunday morning and said in, in the worship service. Because here the Apostle Paul, under the, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God, he tells them, hey, you're standing around puffed up about this. You're mad about it. You're mad about it. You're talking about it. You're discussing it. But you ain't done nothing about it. Now, look what he says that you're supposed to do about it. Down in verse 5. He says, deliver such one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something, that was a saved man. That was a saved man that was committing that fortification with his stepmother. Listen to what the Bible said. It says, deliver one unto Satan for what? For the destruction of the flesh so that what? That his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what it said? You know, to simplify this, to, to for us to understand, Jimmy Pope commentary, turn him over to Satan, let God kill him and let him go to heaven. Now, that's what it says. That's what it said. In other words, you know what it said? That we as Christians can come to the place that we can commit a sin unto death. That we can get so backslidden, so far out of the will of God, that God 
will deliver us unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that we can go with the Lord Jesus Christ.